Our bodies are amazing. They know how to take care of us, and our skin knows how to function. But sometimes things can get a little bit out of whack. One example where that happens is when a plug develops on the skin, which inevitably traps bacteria and oil within the skin and causes acne. We've discussed the four main building blocks of acne in a separate video, but today we are going to specifically dive into plugs, why they form in the skin, and how you can prevent them and therefore prevent breakouts. is really amazing, isn't it? I hope that so far you've been super inspired and learning a lot through these skin science episodes. There's actually a mini pop quiz right here if you want to get super skin sciencey with me. But when it does come to acne, we have discussed the main building blocks and the fact that plugs are one of them. Now, why does the skin get plugged and clogged and what can we actually do about it? Looking back at episode two, we know that the skin is made up of so many beautiful structures and layers. And we remember that the outer layer of the epidermis is constantly sloughing off. It's giving away its little skin cells and they're going free into the world. Until there's an issue. Sometimes physical things can actually block this from happening. If you wear really heavy makeup and don't remove it at night, or if you put on creams or moisturizers that are too heavy for you. Even if you touch your face too much, your fingers can actually push skin cells over, causing these little pores to clog, and therefore not letting oil or bacteria out, and not letting air or other nutrients in. Now even if you remove your makeup properly, even if you're using the right skincare creams for your face, and even if you're not touching your face or have your phone stuck to it, this can still happen. Now why is that? This is where genetics and your body's biology really comes in. We know that our skin exfoliates naturally, but there's a lot of different factors that go into that, such as your age, such as your genetics, and even such as what time of year it is. Is it the summer where it's a bit more humid out, or is it the winter where the weather and your skin tend to be more dry? The average amount of time it takes for skin cells to be generated in the basal layer and pushed up all the way through and sloughed off is 28 days. But did you know that for young children and teenagers, it's actually much faster? It could be as quick as 14 days. And for more mature skin or women who have gone through menopause, that can slow down to even 32 or 35 days. That means there's a lot of opportunity for this entire system to change, including the rate of cellular turnover there's also this intercellular glue. Remember how the oil, the ceramides, and the lipids within our skin kind of keep it glued together? The skin cells are the little bricks, and this other material is kind of the glue or the mortar in between. Well, if your skin's mortar is too sticky, it keeps all of the cells close by, meaning they don't exfoliate off as naturally. That's why a lot of chemical peels, acids, exfoliators, skin brushes, and even lasers are really popular for acne prone skin. A lot of these treatments, although they vary differently, are really just alternative ways of exfoliating the skin. And for people, especially who have these whiteheads, it can be very, very helpful. So now that we know why some of this happens, what can we do about it? Well, we have many different options, whether it's over-the-counter products that have acids and gentle exfoliators, or something like salicylic acid, which actually helps the skin break up that glue so that it can exfoliate like it naturally should. There are prescription treatments such as antibiotics or medications prescribed by a doctor that actually increase the rate of cellular skin turnover, or even prescription retinoids or creams that penetrate really deep into the skin and help to both unclog and create a faster rate of natural exfoliation. There are also lasers, microdermabrasion machines, and even dermaplaning. And the truth is, while many of those can be effective, they can also be overwhelming. But that's why skin science is here. Every single Saturday at 11 a.m., you and I get together to discuss the science of our skin. I believe that we all deserve to know how our skin works, what options are available to us, so that we can choose the best ways to understand, care for, and treat our skin. Go ahead and use your motor neurons to tickle the like button if you enjoyed, and of course subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss future episodes when we do talk about antibiotics or the chemistry of our cosmetics. So until next Saturday, stay curious. 
Always remember to be beautiful and of course, stay hydrated. I'll see you next week on Skin Science.